Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, April 10th, and today we will cover yield max funds, TSLY, CONY, MSTY, NVDY. Uh, so we'll cover their trades, see how they're doing. Um, so I guess there's a, you know, going to be news today on the CPI um, to see, you know, I see this big uh, headline, will inflation ever go down? That's what's frustrating Americans asking ahead of March CPI. So, um, I don't know. Me personally, I don't, it hasn't been going down from what I view. My day-to-day -day life, um, things are getting more expensive, at least from what I see. So, I don't know what's going to happen with this report. Obviously, it's going to affect the market one way or the other. Uh, so expect some news coming out today. I have no idea when, maybe pre-market or whatnot. So, um, or maybe during market, you know, open hours, but who knows? Market could go flip down, flip up. Um, but, uh, either way, expect that today. So there's going to be movement either way. Now let's get to the trades. But before that, um, I talked about TSLY a little yesterday, um, just want to explain to you, you know, kind of my thought real quick. I did sell out of it because some people, they said it was the first they heard of it, but I did mention it, I guess, in quite a few videos. But, but yeah, either way, it, it's all, it doesn't matter. But um, it's officially out of my portfolio, but Tesla is not out of my income portfolio. I do trade options now myself on TSLL, which is a 2x leverage fund of tesla so i no longer now have double exposure i only have exposure of the options that i'm doing on it versus having the options that yield max does it and i'm doing so obviously you could see i've been pretty busy um i have what one two i have three calls and then one two three four puts so i've been making premium week in and week out on tsll and it's working out pretty good. I'm using the wheel strategy um, and I make videos on this once a week, typically every Sunday. So stay tuned for the update, but I just wanted to make a quick update on the daily video because I know uh, maybe some of you don't see the weekend video, uh, but either way, yes, I'm doing options myself on TSLL, which is part of the reason I did trade out of TSLY because I would prefer to do the wheel strategy, you know, on, on Tesla. So I prefer to trade options, you know, myself, because I, again, I kind of got the, uh, we'll call it the itch again to do options because uh, it is fun. I know it's fun to also pay people to do it for you and make money for you uh, because, you know, most of us don't have the time at all. You know, I know a lot of people, their biggest question is like, why would you pay 0.99% for someone to do options for you when you can do it yourself. Well, let's see, the market is open 9.30 to four. Uh, the majority of people work eight to five. So explain to me how they can do options, right? On their lunch break, really? You're gonna have that much time to think and so you're only able to trade during that time. So obviously, you know, you get what I'm saying. But either way, let's get to it, enough, enough yapping. So all four had trades yesterday, of course, you know, first baseball game of the year. And here I am opening, going to the Yield Max website, and we have four trades. So obviously I was up later than I wanted to be updating spreadsheets and then earlier than I wanted to be finishing the spreadsheet. But wow, wow, wow for me. Um, so Tesla had three transactions, not typically what you would see um, in this example. They're actually selling part of the synthetic and closing part of their weekly call. So you see the S on the top, uh, that's sell, sell call, and then BC, buy to close the put. So that's two for the synthetic. And then on the bottom, it's BC, buy to close the 182.50. But they did do this right, and I'll show you how. So let's go to the spreadsheet, um, TSLY. So they have two synthetics as always, right? They have the 175. They did not touch this one. The last time this one was actually touched was March 28th. Um, and this one's actually profitable now because Tesla went up yesterday. It went up to about, it will close at 176.88. So it's above the 175. So they can actually make money on this about 9 million. 
Uh, but again, this synthetic expires May 17th. So we have plenty of time regardless. Now the 170, obviously they're doing even better, right? They're up 8.6 million. Now they had to close 845 contracts and the reason is people have sold out yesterday of yesterday or the day before. I'm not sure of the timing, but people have sold out of Tesla. So when people sell out of Tesla or any yield max fund in general, they no longer have that, you know, in in, in their fund. So, so if they don't have the capital in the fund to do the options, they have to obviously close out some of the contracts. So in order to do that, it's a two-step process, right? They close out the call, the weekly call, and they close out the synthetic. So here they closed out 845 contracts. Um, and in doing so, they're doing they're selling uh, their call. Because again, in, when they opened the position, they bought the call. So now they're selling their call and they're paying to close the put. But they decided to, you know, if they're going to close out a synthetic, they're going to use the 170. And that's a very smart move because the 170 is more profitable. So um, good job by them. They made 1.3 million on the sell call and only had to pay about 800,000 on the BC put, the buy to close put. So, you know, all in all, they made over, you know, almost $550,000 for, I'll say, you know, an unfortunate reason, closing out uh, the synthetic, but regardless, they made money on it. So again, great job, Tesla fund manager. Now, they also made a pretty good move on the, the uh, weeklies, I'll show you in a second, but first, um, let's see how Tesla did yesterday. We talked about it. Um, in the end, well, Tesla was up, I think even higher earlier in the day. Um, actually I decided to take profits on my swing trading on TSLT because it was up a decent amount. Um, cause you never know what today, right? If it dips today, then I could buy more. Uh, but either way, Tesla was up 2.25%. Tesla was up 1.5%. Now I mentioned they closed out 845 contracts. So they decided to close out which ones? The 182.50. Why? Cause that is well above the current price of Tesla, which is 176. So guess what? Um, it costs them less to close it than what they got in premium in advance, right? In the beginning, last week. So they paid 88 cents to close 800, you know, per share, 845 contracts, right? So all in all, if they use the 172.50, that would have cost them more. Why? Because the 172.50 call is below the price of Tesla. So obviously this is the smarter move to close out the higher strike price call, which is still above the Tesla stock price. So since they only paid 88 cents, um, they made an ending profit for those contracts of 76,000, all right? So both the synthetic and the weekly call made money when all said and done on those 845 contracts that they had to close because people sold out. I'm just trying to explain to you, you know, when things like this happen, obviously we're so used to people just buying into the fund and them creating new positions, but when they have to close out positions, it, there's also, you know, methodology towards it that needs to be done. It, it's not just robotic, right? When you have, especially when you have two synthetics and two, two strike prices on the weekly calls, you know, obviously there's things that need to be done, but I'm happy to say they did it right on both examples. All right, so now let's look at the outstanding shares as mentioned. Yes, people sold out. So outstanding shares went down by 200,000. Uh, cash, we're cash positive again, so that's good. See this part, I just don't understand. So on the 5th, which is Friday, we were cash positive. But on Monday, we decided to put more cash than what we had into the money market. And then sure enough, they took it back from the money market and made us cash positive again, but this time 9 million. So again, I just, the musical balance sheet, I just, that part I don't get. I'd love to answer, ask that question to someone from uh, Yield Max. Um, overall, cash and treasuries though went down by 2.5 million, but obviously that's because people sold out. And when people sold out, sell out, uh, that cash leaves 
of the fund. So if cash leaves the fund, obviously cash and treasuries will go down. All right, so where are we at? Um, outstanding shares for Tesla, 45,700,000. Weekly call income, 8.9 million. Total distribution per share from the weekly call income, 20 cents. Daily income of four cents a day. Daily yield, 0.25%. That's the sweet spot. And annualized yield, 92.44%. So, so far, so good. But let's take a look at the active tab. Oh, you already saw the reaction. But either way, um, obviously the um, the amount of contracts went down on the 182.50, right? Because I had to subtract out 845. So now there's 20,135 contracts on the 182.50. That one's still safe, as we saw, 3.18% out of the money. However, uh, 20,980 contracts still have the 172.50 strike, that's 2.48% in the money. So we kind of need Tesla to, to slow down a little and go, actually go down um, so we can make profit on both uh, strike prices, all of the contracts, which is what we want. Uh, so again, Tesla price is currently at 176.88. 30-day IV is 56.17%, so pretty, pretty damn good IV. 30-day chart, not bad not bad at all good job tesla you're coming up uh tesla price is 15.52 uh potential capital gains 24 cents again we have what three trading days so 24 cents you can make in three trading days reaction um i would say this is the tesla fund manager again they made good moves yesterday but they're kind of like oh wow tesla actually went up i might lose on my weekly calls so that's still a possibility right now they're losing on one uh, but not the other. So it's pretty close. Um, again, earnings is on April 23rd. No change on curve. They still have 101 contracts with a 210 strike that expires on May 17th. Also, they have a synthetic position. That's a 190 strike. Um, and, you know, that's not in profit yet because obviously Tesla, what we say Tesla is 176 at the moment. Um, but they, that expires July 19th, so, uh, which is, you know, actually my birthday, but, um, we'll see how, you know, how that plays out. Um, obviously I would think Tesla is going to be above 190 by, uh, July 19th, and, you know, when it's nice out, not freezing. All right. Payment information. Let's take a look at that. Synthetic income, 545,000 short call income. 8.9 million, net income 9.5 million. All right, so total income per share, they're earning 21 cents. Short call income alone, 20 cents. So obviously most of their income that they're generating is coming from the short call income as it should. All right, outstanding holdings. Um, right now, their buy calls are in orange and their sell puts are in pink. So you will see, um, they are winning on both synthetic positions. But more importantly, the weekly calls are in blue, so we need to make sure we make a profit on those. Right now, the 172.50 is in danger. So if we get like a bad CPI report today, the whole market could go down, which would include Tesla, most likely. Um, and, you know, we could essentially win. Um, but anyway, net asset value of Tesla fund is 709.4 million. The NAV is 1552 and the trade price is actually 1552 on the money. So we should look at pre-market. All right. Using marketwatch.com, of course. When was this last updated? All right, 4.32 a.m., we are up 0.52% on Tesla at 177.80, okay? But obviously that can change. So let's go to the next trade. The next trade is on NVIDIA. Now, um, three transactions. These are the ones that you're typically used to seeing, a buy call, a sell put, and a sell call. So adding 160 contracts to the synthetic position and then adding a weekly call, which it actually expires on Friday. So let's take a look at the spreadsheet. Here we go. 
go. Okay. Uh, NVIDIA has one synthetic position for a 915 strike. Currently, NVIDIA is priced uh, pretty far below that. They're at 853. So when they open, uh, when they add to this current synthetic position, they're actually going to make money because the sell put uh, will give them the credit, a pretty high credit, uh, 1.3 million in this example um, to open that position. Because uh, so, obviously selling put is a bullish play and you're committing to buying shares at the strike price of the synthetic, which in this example is 915. And with the price at 853, it's pretty far away. So uh, that's why we're going to make money on that transaction. Uh, the buy call is cheaper. It's 362000 That's actually something we had to pay for. But all in all, we, we made a million dollars by adding uh, 160 contracts to the 915 synthetic. But currently, obviously, um, it expires May 17th, so we don't have to worry about this, but it would cost us $27.1 to actually close out the synthetic position. All right, April tab. Let's see how NVIDIA did yesterday. Not good. Uh, it went down by 2.04%. NVIDIA only went down by 1.83%. Um, again, they opened 160 contracts with a 80, 870 strike price. And they decided to go 1.93% out of the money. Uh, and this yielded 0.62%. Again, this is for three trading days, though. So that's pretty good. Um, they got a credit of $84,800. Outstanding shares uh, did go up about four. What is that? $475,000. Um, and overall cash and treasuries did go up by $13.3 million. So, yeah, this fund grows all the time. People are trying to get to into NVIDIA because, you know, you'd call this a discount. It's been around the $30 range, high 20s, for quite some time. So this is a, you know, a good fund. Some say NVIDIA is overvalued. So maybe the uh, this is far from over, but who knows, right? I try not to play that game, the guessing game. But anyway, outstanding shares, 15800000 Total income, $3.8 million on the weekly calls. Total distribution from the weekly calls, $0.24. Cents. Daily income, $0.05 cents a day. Daily yield, 0.19%. Annualized is 69%. So not bad. Active tab, how are we doing? Well, we now have three sets of strikes. I'll start from the lowest. 160 contracts with an 870 strike. That's still out of the money, but barely 1.93%. Um, I believe that was, that was the newest position, right? Yeah. So the lowest strike is the newest position. So they don't think, clearly, they don't think NVIDIA will recover um, by much, if at all. Um, and then we have 520 contracts with an 895 strike. That's 4.86% out of the money. And then obviously the bulk of it, 4,070 contracts with a 910 strike, 6.61% out of the money. So pretty decent cushion, especially considering how NVIDIA has been trading. Um, so they may be okay this week. NVIDIA price, 850, 354, 30-day IV, really weak, 40%. So that's been going down. Uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA chart, not that great as of late. NVIDIA is priced at twenty five seventy two, and their earnings is next month on May 22nd, unless they change it, of course. Capital gains for this week, they can add another potential $1.61, which I would gladly take. Coney Fund Manager knows, okay, we're, we're getting tight, we're getting a little close, but... You know, that's how it started. So we'll see how it goes. They may be right in the end. So synthetic income for April, 2.9 million. Short call income, 3.8 million. We're looking at total net income of 6.7 million, which if they pay it out in full would result in 43 cents per share. Um, short call income alone, though, is 24 cents per share. So either way, looking good so far. Outstanding holdings. Again, they only have one synthetic and you see the orange, which is the value of the buy call, which is much less than how much it would cost to close the put. So we'll see. But again, um, that expires May 17th. 
And then in blue, this is how much it's gonna cost to close out the weekly calls. Again, they have a lot of time value to, you know, take these down, assuming the price does not skyrocket up. So, so far, so good. They could, you know, they're looking good for this week. That's all I'm gonna say. Net asset value, 405.1 million. NAV is 2564 and the trade price is 2572. So it's more than the NAV, which seems to be the going trend. Okay, NVIDIA or NVIDIA pre-market. Let's do a refresh. And they are down, no shocker here. They're down 0.44%. They're at 849.77, okay? So that's it for NVIDIA. Let's move on. I know this is a lot today, but there's four trades. What can I do? Um, so Kony, three transactions. As usual, buy call, sell put, sell call. So adding 545 contracts to the synthetic position, using them right away and selling a call that expires this week, okay? So let's go to Kony spreadsheet. Again, they have one synthetic position. This synthetic position is a 250 strike. Uh, coin is priced below that at 242. So as you can imagine, they made money on opening a new, you know, synthetic position with 545 contracts because uh, the put credit was greater than the call debit. Um, so they made almost 200,000 on that transaction. However, um, this synthetic is actually expiring next week. So we kind of need coin to get moving back up. Um, since this synthetic has a strike of 250, we would like coin to be at 250 or above, preferably by April 19th. If not, you know, it is what it is. They'll, they'll take a loss on the roll because they'll, you know, they'll close out this position. They'll make a new strike uh, for the new synthetic position with a new expiration date. Um, which typically usually costs a little money. Um, so they'll take the loss on the prior synthetic and then they'll pay a little amount on the new synthetic. But they've been doing so well, that's not really a worry. Unless, of course, coin just really tanks. And then obviously this synthetic closeout would be a, a little more damaging than expected. But we'll see. Time will tell. But, you know, again, they only have, have well, like a week and a half here. All right, so if we go to the April tab, um, Coin had a had a rough day. Coin went down 5.46%. Coney only went down 2.6%. So, you know, for, you know, the people, the growth investors that say just invest in the underlying, well, guess what? When the underlying goes down, we only went down, you know, by half, not even. So, you know, there's good, you know, it goes both ways. So obviously... Yes, we can get capped on the way up, but look, look at on the way down. We're making money on the way down. Not making money, but we're, we're not going down as bad because, well, the current calls are doing better. And then we also opened a new position. Again, the 545 contracts, they chose a 257.50 strike, which, as you know, is the current strike. And they decided to go 5.99% out of the money with three trading days. That yields 1.23% which is really good for three trading days, um, or $163,000, which, you know, pretty good. Outstanding shares went up by 150000 Cash and treasuries as a whole, though, it did go up by $4.2 million, so not bad. Outstanding shares, $15,750,000. Weekly call income, $8.2 million. Total distribution per share, $0.52. Cents. Total daily income, 10 cents a share, total daily yield, 0.41%. That's a pretty good number right there. You know, who, who can yield 0.41% on a daily basis? Annualized yield, 149%. Show me the money. Okay, let's go to the active tab. What do we got open? Well, since they added those contracts to the same strike, we only had one strike. So we still only have one strike. Um, but... Obviously, you know, I wasn't really happy with the current strike, one strike and then how close it was. But here we are. Here we are with what? Three trading days. You know, when, the, when they opened that position, 
How far out of the money was it? It was 6.89% out of the money at the time. And here we are, it's still 5.99% out of the money. So, so far, I know it's only been two days, but the Coney Fund Manager looks like they did. They made the right decision. Uh, obviously, we have news today, which could just change everything, but I'm just gonna say, so far, so good. So we have 16,420 contracts with a 257.50 strike, as mentioned, 5.99% out of the money. Coin price is 242.95, 30-day IV, 90.32%. Chart is all over the place. Um, as mentioned, Coney price is twenty five forty six. Uh, having is um, deemed to be April nineteenth, which is next week. Capital gains is a dollar fifty two for this week. Reaction, you know, they were a little worried yesterday. But Coney fund manager has a smile on his face when he goes to the office today. For now, synthetic income. I am showing 190,000 short call income 8.2 million net income as a whole fifth no yes net income as a whole 8.4 million sometimes I'm talking way too much I don't even know what I'm saying anymore so total income per share 53 cents short call income hold the majority of it 52 cents so again great great job so far no complaints um, for the holdings, uh, their call, again, is in orange, and their put is in pink. And the call, of course, as we spoke, is not worth more than the put. So they're in a hole right now with that. And that expires next week, as mentioned. And their weekly call, they only have one. We'll see how it goes. Um, obviously, three trading days, it cost them today 240 to close. So obviously, they're not going to close it. Net asset value, they are almost... At 400 million, they're at 399.5 million. The NAV is 25.37, and the trade price is 25.46. So that's Coney, and we can look at the pre market for coin, um, even though it's early. As you know, I do these videos pretty early so I can get them out to you by 6 30 a.m. Right now, this is a refresh as of 4.45 a.m. as I sit in the garage. And yes, it's actually not as cold as usual, so don't feel bad for me. Um, getting used to this. Maybe I'll get a more comfortable chair, though. I'm in like a metal folding chair at the moment. Um, Pre-market is up 0.74% at 244.79. So, okay. We'll take it, right? We'll take it. Um, so, what's left? We got one more trade. And it's on everyone's favorite, most people's favorite, I'll say, flavor of the month, flavor of the past two months, Misty. So they have three transactions, buy call, sell put, sell call. So yes, more people are buying in, which means they can add new contracts and sell new calls, which is awesome. That's what we want to say. Okay, so let me go to my spreadsheet. Okay, 1700 is their synthetic strike price. So since MSTR is well below the 1700, they're at 1441 actually. They had 75 contracts, so they made money. They made money on that put, 2.1 million to be exact, and they only paid 262, 462,000 open the call. So profitable, you know, in opening that position. However, this synthetic has an expiration date of 419, which is next week. So yes, you're making money on the put. However, at some point, that put needs to be closed out, right? Uh, you know, so right now, all said and done, call and put together, 13.9 million would be what it would cost. But again, we do have a week plus three trading days. So we could be above 1700 you never know um, the way things are headed though it doesn't look that way but again you never know so look at that nice april profits already 1.9 million so obviously if we do end up above 1700 this synthetic is going to be golden but let's not uh jump ahead here mstr it did go up by 4.7 oh no i'm sorry i'm going blind apparently too 
uh, MSTR went down by 4.76%. MSTY only went down by 3.68%. Again, they had 75 contracts to play with. They chose a Friday expiration and they chose a strike price of 1530, which is 6.17% out of month out of the money, and it yields 1.98%. And it brought in a profit of $213,750, which by the way would go directly to the cash position in um you know in their balance sheet, which would raise the net asset value in the fund, hence increasing the value of the NAF. Outstanding shares did go up by 300,000. Cash and treasuries as a whole, wow, it went up 12.4 million. So obviously new shareholders plus short call premium brought it up a decent amount. Outstanding shares, 2.4 million income from the weekly calls, 2. Point, wow, 2.4 million. On the look at that. 2.4 million outstanding shares, 2.4 million income. Wow, is that even right? That's a lot of money they're making already. Wow, that's a distribution of a dollar one per share already. Daily income, 20 cents. Daily yield, 0.59%. Annualized yield, 213%. Who yields 213%? Oh my God. Active tab. Okay, what do we got here? All right, let's go on order from lowest to highest. Right now, all positions look good. 75 contracts, this is the lowest. 15, 30 strikes, 6.17% out of the money. 40 contracts, 1,006, that ain't right. 1,657, what the heck did I do there? Where is it? 1,000, 657.50. That's actually what I wrote. I'm gonna have to go back and check that. Unless that was like a reverse, <coughs> pre reverse split number, I would think it's 1650 50. I don't know, maybe it's right. All right, either way, 40 contracts, 1657 50, 15% out of the money. 290 contracts, 1705. This is the biggest position, and it's 18.32% out of the money. 10 contracts, 1750 strike, that's 20. 1% out of the money. And then 130 contracts with a 1,920 strike price, 33% out of the money. Wow, talk about room for growth here. 30 day IV, 128%. MSTR price, 1441. 30 day chart, to be honest, not that great. Uh, Misty is at, it's still at 34. Misty is still at 34.58. People just got paid like $4. And their nav, their trade price is at $34. And they probably, a lot of people pay 20. So they don't give a damn. They're like, I'm, I'm making money. I don't know what you're talking about. Potential capital gains, $6.92. This is just for this week. Uh, so my reaction, still money man, man. There he's just, you know, that, the green tongue. The green tongue of money. So he's, he's, he's possibly going to make even more money. We'll see though. All right, let's take a look at this. Synthetic income, 1.9 million. Short call income, 2.4 million. Total net income, 4.3. So with all the income, they're looking at $1.82 per share. With just short call income, as we mentioned, is $1.01. So either way, they're doing fantastic. However, we have to look at their synthetic position um, you can see it, it's going to cost them $16 million to close out the put as of right now. And they're going to only get a credit of $2.1 million on that buy call. Because that's all it's worth. Because that strike is way up. Um, but again, they have time. They have about eight trading days. In blue, these are the weekly calls. Again, we have three trading days. So not much to you know, be concerned about. Especially considering how way out of the money some of those are. But the net asset value... For Misty is eighty two point five million. The NAV is thirty four forty two, and the trade price is thirty four fifty eight. So not bad, right? Not bad at all. All right, MSTR price. People flying down the road this early. All right, let's see. Let's see how we're looking. 
uh, coin was up, right? Coin was up pre-market. MSTR is not following. Um, again, this is as of 4.51 a.m., I'm showing MSTR is down 0.76%. So, again, I mean, the market opens when? In almost like five hours. Like, so a, lot, a lot's going to change. Uh, went down a little more, just so you know. But either way, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens today. Um, obviously, a big day with CPI or whatever. You know, just more crap for the news to talk about, for the government to just yap about and waste our tax dollars on, blah, blah, blah. Whatever they do, they do. Yes, inflation sucks. I can tell you that. That's a simple answer. I don't need anyone to tell me that inflation is killing everyone, you know. Things are unaffordable, uh, you know. That's no. That's you don't. It's, you don't have to be get paid two hundred k a year and have a government pension to know that, you know. But anyway, let's not get on that rant because that's a whole whole another issue for another day. That that's like a commute issue. But either way, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a pretty long video. I feel like I'm exhausted already. Um, but if you did enjoy this, please hit the like button. Um, it does help. I know it's, you don't feel like it, right? You're, you're probably turned off the video. If you didn't, you're, you're like, all right, just enough of the likes. But that's, that's what helps this channel. Um, you know, and so if you, if you don't hit the like, I don't, again, I don't, YouTube doesn't think people like the video. So I guess they don't like to share it. So that's the thing. So if you hit the like, then obviously YouTube thinks, more people would like it. And if more people like it, then more people will watch it. And then YouTube can make more ad re revenue off of me, right? That's the whole thing, right? In the end, it's, it's all about money. But like I said, only if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, then don't watch, right? Um, but um, if you have any questions, concerns, leave it in the comments below, negative or not. I really don't care. I know a lot of people... Uh, I've been getting a, a lot of negative feedback saying, oh my God, these are crap and, you know, whatever. That's fine if you think that, okay. That's, that's, that's your opinion. Um, these are different tools in the tool shed, right? We can use these or we, we cannot use these. That, that's the beauty. You know, the beauty of these funds are they're available now to our disposal. You know, we can choose to invest it. Yes, we pay a 0.99% expense fee. But as you can see, some of these funds perform very well and they yield a very good amount. So, and keep in mind, these are income funds, okay? They are not made to beat the underlying. They are not made to beat the index. They are made to produce income. Total return, sure, it's possible to beat the underlying. Sure, it's possible to beat the index, but that's not what they're made for. So stop comparing it to that. Let's just look at total return. Let's look at total income. You know, are you happy with it? Great. Then that's it. That's the end of it. Is it pay your bills? Great. End of story. All right. I mean, how much, how many times can we talk about it? Um, but as always, guys, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, this video is for fun and entertainment. I did make some buys yesterday. Um, who, did, who did I buy? I bought... Um, I bought Clip, 10 shares of Clip. I bought 10 more shares of Ulti and I bought 10 more shares of Phoebe. So there's my update there. I'm not sure if you guys care what I buy on a daily basis, but I actually, I can add that to this video if you do, if you guys do care. Um, but anyway, that that's all I really got for today. Um, you know, a uh, busy day today. At least I'm home, but the floors are getting done. So the house is gonna be, you know, quite the mess. Um, let's see what do we got for keyword. Um, yeah, inflation sucks. How about that? Yeah, inflation's high. Inflation sucks. Whatever. I'm sure you all can agree on that, right? So I don't think anyone's arguing that, except maybe the government who thinks it's not going up. I'm sure some of them don't. But um, either way, I think I yapped enough for one day. Um, so thank you for watching. Thank you if you made it this far. Uh, keyword, inflation sucks. And I hope you guys have a great day. All right. Have a good one. Later.